And out of Climate Watch, and once again, the news is not good. New research finds the Earth's oceans are absorbing much more heat than previously thought, and this suggests that even faster rates of global warming are in our future. According to a study published Wednesday in the journal Nature, the Earth's oceans have absorbed nearly 60 percent more heat over the last 25 years than we previously thought. Joining me now is CBS News contributing meteorologist Jeff Birodelli to walk me through this. Yeah. Okay, so... A 60% difference in what we thought. That's not That's a small a error. If I said, let me take 60% of your money, what would you say to that? I prefer it the other way. Good <laughs> right. news, you have 60% more money right. in your bank account. That, that is nice. Uh, yeah, that's a huge amount. Missing 60% of heat for the last 25 years. That's a big deal. Uh, but scientists are now going to have to do their due diligence and check the math on this and check the methods and make sure it stands up. I mean, it's a peer-reviewed study. It's done by some of the best institutions in the world. However, with all that said, I think we need some more time to absorb this. If that is true, it has major implications for the world. It means that while there is already measurable warning, according to the scientific consensus, much more warming is in store if this heat that the ocean is absorbing is released. So the ocean absorbs 93 percent of the heat that essentially is trapped by greenhouse gases from the emissions of of CO2 and methane. Uh, And it gets trapped in the ocean. At some point, the ocean is going to release that. And it already is releasing that in ways, shapes and forms, if you will. Stronger hurricanes, uh, more Mm -hmm. intense precipitation, more intense rainfall, bigger floods. So um, there's a lot of reasons why this is a a big problem. And it, it is it is going to be released eventually. Um, a lot of it is uh, is stored in the oceans right now. And that's the reason why we're not feeling this intense heat in the atmosphere, right? That's because the oceans are kind of buffering it right now. Where are we on the global goal of keeping warming within two degrees? So the latest report, which was a special report 15 from the IPCC, came out a few weeks ago, basically said that we need to reduce CO2 emissions by 50 percent by the year 20. 20- 30. That's only 12 years from now. I mean, it, it's a virtually impossible feat. Yeah. What's your expectation then for the future? Are we beyond the point of no return? Uh, you know, I wouldn't say that we're beyond the point of no return. I think there's a lot that we can do. But I think we should talk about what this 60 percent extra heat really means. What are the implications of that? Um, you know, coral reefs already, we've destroyed about 50 percent of coral reefs. Um, so it's not a theoretical problem. No, this means oceans are getting warming or getting right. warmer. It, it means hurricanes could potentially be getting stronger. That's one theory. Uh, stronger heat waves, more intense heat waves. Um, you know, like I said, 50 percent of the coral reefs are, have already been obliterated. It's not just the heat. It's also pollution. It's also a lot of things. However, as the oceans heat up, we cause more essentially whitening uh, of the coral reefs. We call it bleaching and, and that can kill coral reefs. In fact, we think that by 2050, 90 to 100 percent of coral reefs could be done. Also, um, sea level rise. Sea level rise happens faster because warmer water actually expands. So half of the sea level rise we've seen since 1900 is actually due to the expansion of the oceans and not just the melting of glaciers. But I'll, I'll add one more thing to it. When you warm the water, it actually gets underneath some of these glaciers, some of these ice sheets in the North and South Pole, melts them even more. So there are mm-hmm. tremendous implications uh, for our future. So there's a feedback loop. Yeah. What well, you know, what if I said to you, look, I don't snorkel. I don't care about the coral reefs. <laughs> Oh, boy, that's a big problem because uh, essentially 25 percent of the living creatures in the ocean depend upon our coral reefs. It is the foundation of so much of what happens in the ocean. You kill the coral reefs. Eventually, you could kill the oceans. What can individual people do if they are hearing this report and thinking something must be done? Well, I think people need to take it seriously. This is everybody's responsibility. This is an all hands on deck situation. Governments need to respond. All world leaders need to respond. But on an individual basis, we are responsible for electing these world leaders. We are responsible for kind of changing the course of the conversation. So, for instance, you know, I drive a Prius now and pretty soon I won't have a car living here in Manhattan. Um, You know, I get my 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 uh, power through through wind power. I stopped actually eating meat, although I wouldn't necessarily ask people to do that because it's you know, that's a very controversial thing. I don't expect that what I'm doing is going to make a difference, but I do expect that I'll rub off on other people who will rub off on other people and so on and so forth. It's kind of a grassroots thing. You know, we have a responsibility. We are the caretakers of this of this earth. And, um, you know, we've a report came out a couple of days ago saying that we've destroyed something around something around 60 percent of wildlife around the world just in the past 40 years. Sixty percent. Think about that. Sixty percent of wildlife. So. You know, we're destroying life, which is, is obviously, you know, these poor living creatures 
uh, you know, we should care about them, but also we're destroying the, the essentially the foundation of, of our existence for the future. And we have Thanksgiving coming up, and I can think of something people can do. Have a conversation with the people at your table uh, about the problem and what their contribution to it is. Yeah, we want to make this a kitchen table problem, and it is impacting local areas right now. We saw it with Hurricane Michael. Hurricane Michael would have happened anyway, but Hurricane Michael was this much stronger. And that much stronger, even if it's only 20 or 30 miles an hour stronger than it would have otherwise been, causes a tremendous amount more, exponentially more damage. We're seeing the impacts, more floods, more economic damages. Uh, It's happening right now. It's happening in our local community. And unfortunately, um, you know, we're going to have to solve it ourselves. Yes, technology could help. Uh, you think so? Of course. You know, we're going to technological have to, bailout. Someone's going to solve it for well, us. Well, that'll be part of the solution, but it's an all hands on deck. It's political. It's social. It's it's us. It's technology. It, it, it's literally throw the kitchen sink in, in a thoughtful way at this problem. That's what we need. Yeah. Jeff Pirdelli, meteorologist. Thank you very much. Yeah.